Good afternoon. Tonight、um, we're actually going to be tying another new fly pattern, and that is a terrestrial. But before we get into tying the terrestrial, think about the flies that we have tied in the past several months. They have basically been immature aquatic flies, meaning flies that live most likely、uh, all of their life in the water, except for when the time that they hatch, and they are in the adult form of their life cycle. But we're going to be teaching a terrestrial today. A terrestrial has its entire life cycle on land. Why are we teaching the terrestrials now? Because at this time of the year, terrestrial bugs or flies are very prevalent. Examples of that would be beetles and grasshoppers and crickets and ants, and they are very plentiful at this time of the year. And of course, because they contain more energy because of the size than a small, let's say, mayfly nymph or caddisfly pupa,、um, fish can put on a lot of weight in the summertime. Uh, by eating the larger terrestrials that are very prevalent. So, what are some of the new techniques and materials that you'll be using in tying terrestrials? Well, predominantly, what、um, I have been using for the past several years is craft foam、uh, in different colors to represent、uh, the different insects. For example, if you were tying a cricket, you would use black foam. If you're tying a grasshopper, you might choose yellow or or off yellow, or somewhat slightly green, because grasshoppers, depending upon the time of the year, do change their colors. You'll also be learning to put on legs and wings, and a post that makes it easier for you to see your fly on the surface of the water. You will be provided if you are signing up for this. Session with all of the materials except the polyacrylate cement that's found in most dollar stores, craft stores, and hardware stores. Now there are dozens of ways to tie terrestrials, and they're relatively easy to tie, and they're durable and they're very versatile. And so I have I have picked one of the easiest、um, forms of terrestrials to tie. And just like as if you were tying a mayfly or a caddisfly or one of the other aquatic flies, the anatomy of a terrestrial and an aquatic insect are virtually similar. They each have an abdomen, they each have a thorax, they each have head and legs, and of course, in the adult form, a wing. And at the end of today's session, I will describe how and where. To fish a terrestrial pattern. All right,、um, the first pattern that we're going to be tying is going to be the grasshopper pattern. And so, before beginning to tie, I'm going to、um, very briefly review the components that we are using in tying the grasshopper pattern.、Um, the first, which is the that I'm going to show you, is the wing material, which Are referred to as EP, standing for the developer of these fibers, and、uh, his name was Enrico Pelusi. And this comes in various colors, but today I'm going to be using either the white or this slightly off-colored gray material. And you will receive these fibers in the mail. The body of the fly, or the Um, abdomen and thorax and head is going to be a strip of foam, and this foam comes from most any craft shop, and it comes in a variety of colors. So as you can see here, I have tan and green and brown and chartreuse and even orange. So again,、um, it's a lot of Of what we do in fly tying is is leaving it up to、um, your curiosity as you go forth to to tie the fly. The other components that will be in the grasshopper pattern are going to be size ten streamer hooks. 
barred silly legs, which will, of course, represent the legs of the grasshopper. And the last the component will be a piece of this um, fire orange um, wool type material that's often used for making salmon eggs. And this will represent um, the uh, post of the fly, which is going to make it much easier for you or any other fisherman that uses uh, flies like this to be able to see his or her fly on the surface of the water. So those are going to be the components. And last but not least is going to be the super glue, um, which basically I, I got this from a dollar store. Um, it's the uh, uh, super glue uh, cyano acrylic acrylate yeah all right <clears throat> i have already uh i've taken one of these size 10 streamer hooks and i've already pinched down the barb on the hook so i will put that in the in the vise at this point and start a thread wrap <clears throat> starting immediately behind the eye of the hook and wrapping it the entire length of the shank of the hook until I'm close to where the bend of the hook begins. Clip off the extra thread. <clears throat> and now I'm going to make wraps back to the front so that I have built up a pretty good layer of thread um, on the fly. And then once again, wrap the thread back for a third time, stopping it right at the beginning of the bend of the hook. The next thing I'm going to do, because I have chose to use the <coughs> brown piece of foam, or actually it's a, it's a tan color, is I want to make this a little bit mottled. So I'm going to take a Sharpie magic marker and just make some coloration on one side of the foam. The next thing I will do is sort of shape the tail by making two cuts. Like so. <clears throat> now, this is going to represent the underside of the fly because that's the side that the fish are looking at, of course, as they're looking up. And I leave just a small amount. This is about uh, maybe um, a third of an inch behind the bend of the hook. I hold it with my left hand, pinching it, and make several wraps right there. Thus, we have the tail. Then you lift this foam up. <clears throat> make several wraps again towards the eye of the hook, stopping about one-third of the, of the distance back from the eye, <clears throat> and you make another segment with one, two, three wraps. Okay. Lift the foam up one more time, wrap the thread forward, again pinch it, and create another segment. So now we have <clears throat> the tail, the abdomen, the thorax, and of course the head will be sticking forward, but we're not to that point yet. In order to hold this all in place, I'm now gonna put, I'm gonna turn the fly over and just put a light coat of the um, cement on, starting at the rear of the hook and just going right up through the abdomen and the thorax. I can turn the fly over. Next thing I'm going to do is select a section of the EP fibers, which I've already had pre-cut, <clears throat> getting prepared for this session. And I'm going to darken them slightly with, again, with the Sharpie 
um, brown uh, pen. Now, if this, if you wanted to tie it with just white or off color, make it a little bit easier to see, you can do that. But I think that um, putting a little bit of darkening in makes it a little bit more natural. So I have, I don't know if you can see that clearly, but I've darkened that a little bit with my pen. I now measure the length that I want this wing to be sticking out of the rear of the fly. And it should protrude just a little bit beyond where the tail piece of foam is. I measure that and clip off the portion at the front. several wraps of thread at that point. And then you can trim this piece at the front a little bit forward of where the last wrap was <clears throat> made. And at this point, we're able to fashion a head Again, we can use a little bit of the uh, super glue, putting a drop right on top of that piece of, of the EP fibers and folding this back and it will adhere very nicely at that point. Another several wraps right where the thread was initially will form the head. Now, the next thing that I usually do is trim off this excess foam. And I basically do this with two angle cuts, one from my side, and one from the side of the camera. And so we have then sort of a small wing case created. And that holds these fibers down. Now, there's no need to uh, trim this off. Um, real straight because you do want it to look some, somewhat natural. And from the underside, as I'll show towards the camera, you can hardly even see the wing. It's sticking out a little bit on each side, but it's going to make it more natural looking and it's going to make, make it, it a little bit easier for uh, you, the fisher, um, fly fisher, to be able to see. I've also pre-cut um, two of these um, uh, silly legs uh, about uh, two inches in length and of course those will be provided to you uh, with uh, the other materials. This is very simple to add legs to any uh, type of fly using this pr following procedure. So I wrap one piece around my thread. I just raise it up to the side of the fly where I want it to be and it's tied in place. And then I can take the other one and do virtually the same thing, holding it to the opposite side where I want it to be. And um, it will stay in place. Okay. Several more wraps. And then the last part of tying this fly is to put in as a, what I referred to before as a post. Uh, that's a term that's often used um, in creating some sort of a uh, indicator for, that makes it easier for the fly fisher um, to see uh, his or her fly. And using the same procedure of wrapping that piece of yarn, if, if it wasn't clear what I did, I wrapped it around the thread, slid it up on top, held it right in place, 
make one wrap around that holds it there. Now we want that those fibers to be sort of bundled together um, and sticking up. So I will make the next wrap gently around the base of that post and then down on the other side of the fly. Okay, now the fly is, is almost finished. And so if you're not familiar with using um, a whip finisher, um, but you would prefer to use a half hitch tool, I will show you both techniques. You can use the half hitch tool and just go underneath the head to, to secure your knots. So two wraps around the half hitch tool and I've made, I've secured the, the thread in that manner. But if you would want to use the, the whip finisher, make the triangle as normal and just gently go around the fly, making sure you don't trap the legs in it. And there we go. Okay. So I can cut the thread. Now, <clears throat> there is another technique that I learned, which is kind of clever. And that is, if you prefer on a large fly not tying these knots, you can put a drop of the super glue just right on top, lay the thread across, and the thread will adhere to the fly. And you can cut your thread. So there's three different ways that you would be able to finish off the head of this fly or other types of flies like this, other terrestrial. Now we're to the point where we're almost finished. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the post off. And while you may not think that you could see this fly, um, I guarantee you that um, difference in color when the fly is folding on the water stands out very nice. There are other colors that you could use, um, orange or chartreuse or one of my, are my two favorites. Now, in order to get the legs at a workable length, I basically hold the two that are on my side of the fly together and then trim them. And then I do the same thing on the other side. I grab the two, hold them the length that I'm looking for, and then I trim that off. So we now have a uh, finished hopper. And it's very sturdy, um, very durable. It'll take a number of bites from a fish in order to destroy that fly. All right, before we proceed with uh, tying the next fly, which is actually gonna be an ant pattern, I'd like to show you how much variety you can get with just a, a few pieces of foam. So a little bit earlier, I tied the same fly by the same manner <clears throat> in brown, in green, in tan, in yellow, and so on. And as you can see, it's if you have just a few different colors, you can create insects of virtually any color that you want. It's okay. So now we're gonna proceed with virtually the, or almost the same method of tying, and we're gonna do uh, an ant pattern. And then uh, later on, we're gonna do a beetle. The materials that are used for this will be a size 12, uh, terrestrial hook. Uh, these were purchased from Sabre uh, Fly Company. We're going to be using, instead of the rubber legs, we're going to be using a piece of black saddle hackle for the legs. We're going to use black foam since this is an ant pattern. 
and we're going to use the same material that I used for the hopper for the post. The ant does not have a wing, so we don't have to be thinking about what will be the materials for the wing on, on the ant pattern. The first thing I'm going to do, and I, as I said before, I've already pinched down the barbs on the hooks. Um, this should be a standard practice for any fly tire. Um, we've often said that there's two reasons why you want to pinch down the barb. One is so that you have an easy way of releasing the fish. And the other reason is because if you get the hook in yourself or one of your partners, it's going to avoid a trip to the emergency room to get the hook out. Now I'm using black thread and it's six aught. I should have mentioned before that I use uh, six aught tan for the hopper. But we start off the, the procedure basically the same way. Starting to wrap the thread immediately behind the eye. And since this hook is curved much like um, a caddis hook is, um, you have to use your judgment of where to stop and I would say probably right above where the barb of the hook would be. And we'll clip off the extra thread. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is take a se section. I've already pre-cut these. And if you notice, the width of the foam for any of these terrestrials should be about the same width as the gap of the hook. So I'm going to, to make the cuts on this to be long and slender, and I'll show you why that's very important. It's almost a long point. Could probably clip off just a little bit of that. Now, I'm going to bring the thread back forward again. And then, start, starting right about uh, maybe an eighth of an inch beyond the eye of the hook, I'm laying the black foam on top, and I'm tying it down tightly. And I'm tying it all along the shank of the hook. Until I get back to that initial tie-in spot above the uh, barb of the hook. And I'm going to make one more set of wraps so that this is nice and secure. Okay. Then I stop about one third of the way back and fold the foam over. My thread's already in place where I want to tie off the abdomen. So I pull that forward and I hold it in place and make several thread wraps. Notice I'm pulling down on the thread so that it's not pulling the foam to the opposite side. And in that one wrap, I've created the abdomen for this ant. Now is the time that we tie in the legs for this ant. And I've chosen um, a hackle fiber um, that would be probably about a size 10 or 12 dry fly. Um, but you want the fibers to be just about the length of what you would expect the legs on an ant would be. But the, the basic reason for tying this on is it's giving some animation to this ant pattern as it's floating in the water because the fish are able to see the, the small vibrations that's occurring in these fibers, thinking that it probably makes the fly look uh, actually alive. So I have pulled down these fibers, holding onto the tip, and right where the junction is between where I started to fold them down, I lay that on the side of the fly right where the thread was hanging and uh, tie it in as such. 
can make one wrap in front of that, make it nice and secure. Now I don't cut this piece of fiber off yet. I'm going to take my hackle pliers. <clears throat> and secure it, the hackle pliers, to my piece of hackle and make several wraps right there, all in one spot. I found that about three wraps is plenty. Then I switch the thread so that I'm able to secure it, secure this feather. one or two wraps around there, and then one wrap in front of it. And now I can clip off the excess hackle, as well as that tip that I used initially to tie in the, uh, in the hackle. Okay, so we now have the body of the ant and by the way, um, it probably would have been a good idea for me to put a drop of cement on after I had that uh, first piece of foam tied in. That will make that foam adhere very nicely to the thread base. Okay. Now, we advance the thread forward about half the distance to the eye of the hook and create the, the uh, thorax. Okay, I'm going to make one wrap underneath that's going to further secure that. <clears throat> and then I can actually cut the head of the of the ant by making two sort of cross cuts and it makes a head looks like such like that. All right, so the very last thing that we wanted to do with this little ant is again create a post. So I wrap a piece of the um, orange wool around the uh, thread, lift it up to the top of the fly make several wraps there. Again, one wrap around the base that will hold this little post up in the air. Two more wraps. And then that can be clipped off. And then we can again either use a whip finish, which I will in this particular case, to finish off the fly. And now we have an ant. If you choose to clip off any of the hackle, I would suggest that you clip it off the top because we basically want the fish to be looking up and seeing the leg sticking out to the side. And some, sometimes we clip off a little bit off the bottom, to make it sort of even. So I'm not sure whether you can see that clearly, but that is a finished foam ant. The next fly that I'm going to teach is my version of a beetle. Now, this fly is constructed in much the same way as the ant, except that we are putting the rubber legs back in 
instead of hackle for, the, for representing the legs. And I'm also going to be tying in some peacock curl on the bottom, on the abdomen, which is going to give some sort of a glitter to the fly as the fish is looking up. This is going to be relatively easy for you to see also, particularly if you tie it in a bright color. So it doesn't necessarily need to have a post. The post is up to you, the tire, and in your creativity to do whatever you want. So I am just showing you some of the fundamentals of flies that I tie. So I'm gonna set this aside and next go over the materials that we use for the beetle. Again, we're using the um, same hook that we used for um, the last pattern, the ant. And I'm, again, I had already pinched down the barb and I'm putting that into the vise. We will be using the rubber legs again, the same um, variegated silly legs that we used on the hopper. At this time we're using orange foam, uh, not because I think that um, orange beetles are going to uh, be the, the uh, best pe uh, color to use, but I, I'm interested in having um, tires understand that um, there's a lot of versatility in tying these flies. You can use your own creativity. You could pick uh, a dozen different colors. And uh, colors such as this are going to work really good on panfish. And um, I'll get into that at the very end of, of the tying session, talking about uh, different ways of presenting the fly and what the flies are good f uh, in, in terms of a uh, pattern to fish with. The other thing that is different about this is we're going to use peacock curl um, as the underside of the fly. So I will start um, with um, in, this, in this particular case using a lighter colored brown thread. And again, starting right behind the eye of the hook, wrapping it to the bend, much the same way we did with um, the previous fly, the ant. And I clip that off, wrap it back towards the beginning of the fly. Take a section of the orange foam, trim it again as a long cylindrical, uh, I should say a long pointed piece of section of foam. Tie it in <clears throat> on right on top of the hook shank. Wrap the thread all the way back to the bend. Wrap one more time forward. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do um, may seem to be a little uh, untraditional, but hopefully you'll understand my logic for doing this. I'm going to take two pieces of the peacock fiber. I'm going to clip off the end that normally would go into the peacock or the butt end and lay it right on top Then I'm going to wrap it around the shank of the hook. Towards the rear of the fly. And then forward again. And 
then you, <clears throat> by holding the peacock up in the air, bringing your thread behind it, you can secure it in place. And then cut off the excess peacock. Now your thread is just about in place for you to bring the foam forward for this beetle. I bring it forward. The thread is about one third of the distance back on the fly. Make several tight wraps, holding it firmly with your hand. Now this time I'm not using any cement because I don't want the cement to be um, the damping the effect of the peacock that's on the bottom. Okay. Now at this point is where we're going to tie in the rubber legs like we did in the previous fly. And that was the, uh, the hopper. I wrap one of the legs segments around the thread, hold it up to the side of the fly. Another wrap or two will secure that in place. I take the second one, <clears throat> hold it also on the opposite side around the thread, hold it right in place, and tie it in place with a couple wraps. And I can bring that forward. Push this down, <clears throat> creating the thorax part of the this beetle. And then clip off the very front, again, sort of as a extended triangle that will then represent the head of the fly. And now we're ready to finish off this, this fly. Um, I can, as I did before, I can either use the half hitch tool, which I'll use right now, or I could use the whip finisher. So, although it's not, doesn't look like uh, many beetles out there, it will still be a fish catcher. The last thing I, that I'm going to do is trim my legs. <clears throat> One of the reasons that I leave the legs long when I'm constructing the fly is because it's better to have them a little bit long and cut them off shorter than to, cut the, to, than to put them on short and then you don't have the length that you want. Sometimes when you're fishing with rubber leg flies, uh, if the legs are too long, the fly will spin in the air. So if this happens to you, what that indicates is that you should cut the legs off a little bit. So it's always good to have something, clippers or something that's on your fly vest so that you can trim the legs back on um, your flies um, should they begin to spin in the air. So, there we have an orange beetle, which uh, again would be a terrific fly to, to use if you're fishing for panfish. And in a larger variety, in a darker color, it probably would be great for uh, smallmouth bass and some other types of panfish. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed today's tying session. And so now I'm going to talk uh, just briefly about how to fish a terrestrial, at least to how I fish a terrestrial. I'm sure that there are other uh, fly fishers who have their own versions, but um, I have found um, this approach to be very successful. First of all, you can fish a terrestrial, such as this hopper pattern, um, by itself. And you can tie it in various, as I said before, various colors and various uh, types of, of terrestrial patterns. 
Um, could be a cricket, could be a hopper, could be an ant. And you could fish it singly, just on its own, just as you would any other dry fly. Or you can fish it in tandem, which is my favorite way of fishing it. Tandem means that you have two flies on your line at one particular time. And so I have set up a tandem rig here. The first fly is a large beetle-like uh, or hopper-like fly. Um, I picked this one so I thought it'd be easier for you to see. Um, but this is a very effective fly um, on some waters. Now, at the bend of the hook, I've secured another piece of monofilament. And what I generally do is I will go, for example, if the uh, first fly is tied on with 2X, then I use 3X for what we would refer to as the drop or the second fly. Or if it were 4X, I would use 5X, et cetera, for my dropper. But um, the point here is that these two flies are connected. And in this particular type of rig, I like to use a, um, um, a, a um, half hitch um, around the curve of the hook to tie my second fly on. And in this particular rig, I have tied on another small beetle. So in this type of rig, you're giving the fish a selection of either a large insect, which it may not be interested in, but it might be interested in something small. However, the first fly gets the fish to look up. It may not like that fly, but it might like the second fly. So in this tandem rig, I have two flies that are on the surface, or we would we may call that uh, two dry flies. This, however, is my more favorite way, and that is, again, I have a tandem rig, and I have a hopper as my lead fly, and again, attached at the bend of the hook, I have another fly. This one, which is a wet fly, and it could be a nymph, but this is uh, the type of fly that uh, might represent um, some other wet fly pattern, um, a mayfly pattern, it might represent a caddis, pupa, or something like that. But this, the second fly is going to be, of course, because it's weighted, and this particular one has a bead head, it's going to be riding under the surface about six inches. And most generally, I use this rig, and most often, I will catch a fish on the dropper. However, there are occasionally um, a nice large brown trout that's not interested in the small beetle or the small wet fly, but is interested in the big hopper. So it gives, you're giving the fish, in each of these cases, um, sort of a, a menu of flies to choose from. And you might find that uh, the lead fly uh, needs to be changed, or you might find that the, the dropper needs to be changed. Uh, but uh, I, I have, these are my favorite ways of, of fishing uh, terrestrials in a two-fly combination. So I hope that you've enjoyed um, this uh, t tying session. I hope you enjoy tying the flies. And I hope that you've learned a little bit about terrestrials and how to fish them. And uh, uh, tight lines are the best on water. Thank you.